Judges 21. Fruits of Recovery The restoration of Israel had as a result the absolute refusal of any connection with the evil. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpeh, saying There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife, v. 1. Let us remember that, in a day of ruin, when souls, under the action of grace, recover their first love for the Lord, they never become more tolerant of evil. The closer our communion is with God the more does it separate us from evil, but the affections of the saints' hearts towards their brethren are not blunted by this separation, as we see here. For the third time the people went up to the house of God, for this place having been found again, became indispensable to them. Defeat first drove them on that road, victory led them on to it again. And they abode there till even before God. On the previous visit, they wept and sat there before Jehovah, on this occasion, the first thing was to abide there. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face Jehovah will I seek, Psalms 27 verse 8. It is our happiness, amid the evil and the sorrow of the present day, to seek the face of the Lord and abide till even before Him. Tears then flowed and such tears. They lifted up their voices and wept sore. For the first time feeling all the bitterness they said, O Jehovah, God of Israel, why is it come to pass in Israel, that there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel? They did not say, The evil is put away, we are at length in quietness and tranquility. The bitterness was in proportion to their recovery of their affections for Jehovah and for their brethren. The breach had been made, one tribe was wanting, it was like the body suffering from the loss of a limb. Israel's God had been dishonored, the God before whose eyes, in his tabernacle, was the golden table with the twelve loaves of shoe bread thereon. Israel no longer thought of their own dishonor as they had before their humiliation, for the tears of bitterness were shed before Jehovah, and it was when the unity seemed hopelessly lost, that its realization was made good in the hearts of the people, which, in the eyes of Jehovah was more true unity than the semblance of it by the people in a state of declension in the beginning Gough Judges 20. The earliest rays of the morning found Israel at work building an altar. The people might say, with the psalmist, Early will I seek thee. Humiliation and ruin did not hinder worship. What grace that there remained an altar to Jehovah amid such a state of things. Three things preceded this worship and led up to it, resolute separation from all evil, getting back into the presence of God, the ruin deeply felt and acknowledged. It was there that they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, then that the heart entered into what the sacrifice of Christ was for God, and the portion God has given us with Him in it. All these blessings recovered in the path of humiliation, were the starting point for the judgment of Jabesh Gilead. The inhabitants of that place had not come up to Jehovah to Mizpeh. That was indifference to the judgment of the evil by which God had been dishonored in Israel's midst, and it was at the same time contempt for the unity of the people established by God, and which had been confirmed in such a striking way by the attitude of the eleven humble tribes. The people of Jabesh Gilead had doubtless said, that it was no concern of theirs. How frequently do we hear such expressions in our days? Their state was even worse than that of the evildoer. For such a refusal, there was no mercy, but before, the execution of the judgment, Israel delighted to contemplate mercy. And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin their brother, and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing that we have sworn by Jehovah that we will not give them of our daughters to wives? Verses 6, 7, Moreover, the judgment was but the exercise of this mercy, for the cutting off of Jabesh Gilead was with a view to the restoration of Benjamin. Such was the way that Israel came out of that long and painful conflict. Happy indeed are they who learn from such circumstances, and know how to combine perfect hatred of evil, with unmingled love for their brethren. The four hundred young virgins of Jabesh Gilead were given for wives to the poor remnant of Benjamin. But that did not suffice, the wound must be completely bound up. Love was ingenious in finding the remedy and suggested to Israel a way of helping their brethren without disowning their obligations toward God, 
or lowering the standard of separation from evil. Israel allowed themselves to be plundered at Shiloh, verses 1721, as it were under the eyes of Jehovah. Exchanging the victor's place for that of the vanquished, they permitted their brother, so sorely tried by the discipline, to have the last word. And it shall be, they said, when their fathers or their brethren come unto us to complain, that we will say unto them, Be favourable unto them for our sakes, because we reserved not to each man his wife in the war, v. 22. Israel did not say, They reserve not, but, We reserve not. What delicacy and tenderness did those words evince, and how different from those recorded in chapter 20, 12. What wickedness is this that is done among you? Israel no longer separated their cause from that of their brethren and the unity of the people, formed by God Himself, recovered its due place of importance in the eyes of the faithful in those sorrowful days of declension. God grant that such may be the case with us, my brethren. If men, if Christians even, lightly esteem the divine unity of the Church, or, when forced to avow that it is outwardly gone, seek to substitute for it a miserable dobing with untempered mortar and content themselves with an appearance of unity which does not deceive even those upholding it, if, in a word, men form alliances between their various sects, proving the very ruin they seek to justify, let us turn away from such things, humbling ourselves on account of the ruin of the Church. Looked at on the side of human responsibility, without conforming to it, boldly proclaiming that, there is one body and one spirit, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, Ephesians 4 verses 3 and 4, refusing all fellowship with the moral and religious evil of the day, and above all these things putting on love, which is the bond of perfectness, Colossians 3 verse 14. Such is the instruction contained in the book of Judges, which closes with the solemn repetition of that which characterized the evil days. In those days there was no king in Israel, every man did that which was right in his own eyes, v. 25. God did not change that deplorable state of things, He simply states the fact, but He led His own away from the confused light of conscience, which while it judged never guided them, and brought them back to the pure light of His own infallible Word which was able to conduct them, to build them up, and to give them an inheritance among all them which are sanctified, cf. Acts 20 verse 32. To the law and to the testimony, this is our safeguard in a day of ruin. Isaiah 8 verse 20